Hello, how are you doing? Have you heard the term LLM scaling laws? And you're not quite sure you know exactly what this is. Well, if so, then watch along with me for the next few minutes and I will quickly get you up to speed. Okay, let's get started. So what do we mean by LLM scaling laws? Well, LLM scaling laws describe how LLM performance improves predictably with scale. So what exactly is being scaled here? Well, the first is the size of the LM model measured in parameters. The second is the size of the training data set. And the third is the amount of compute. Essentially, the LLM scaling laws state that performance of LLMs improves in a predictable manner following these scaling curves. Quick note, when we talk about these LLM scaling laws, they primarily apply to large models trained from scratch, but their principles can still provide useful insights for small models and distilled models. Distilled models don't strictly follow traditional scaling laws because they benefit from the teacher-student transfer learning, allowing them to achieve better performance than an equivalently sized non-distilled model. If you want to learn more about this, feel free to check this video out I created earlier. But moving back to scaling laws. With scaling laws, it turns out there's optimal balance between the number of model parameters, the amount of training data, and the compute used for training to maximize performance. Overscaling one aspect without balancing the others leads to diminishing returns. Essentially, if you scale one or two of these areas and not the third, you are likely not to see significant LM performance improvements. This balance of model size, training data, and compute is highlighted by the Chinchilla paper. The Chinchilla paper, officially titled Training Compute Optimal Large Language Models, was published by researchers from DeepMind in March of 2022. I've included a link to this paper in the YouTube description for this video. It summarized the results of experiments for a given fixed compute. It found that smaller models trained on significantly larger data sets outperformed larger models trained on limited data sets. This suggests that optimal performance is achieved by balancing the model size and the training data. Another observation with LM scaling laws is in the area of the LM's ability to generalize. Larger models trained with more data tend to generalize better and achieve higher performance on downstream tasks with fewer examples. Over the past decades, as neural networks and large language models have evolved, there has occasionally been bottlenecks in scaling. The first big example of one of these bottlenecks goes back to the early 2000s, when researchers were still using CPUs for compute when training their early models. At this time, there were big challenges in training ever-growing larger models with large data sets using CPUs. During this time, researchers discovered they could use GPUs instead of CPUs to accelerate model training. This opened the door to scale up both model size and training data sets, respectively. Adopting GPUs over CPUs was an early big breakthrough in overcoming scaling bottlenecks and essentially shifting the scaling curve. In more recent years, there have been examples of bottlenecks which were overcome with innovations in model architecture. A big example of this was the introduction of the transformer architecture in 2017 by Google researchers. You can read more about this in their seminal paper, Attention is All You Need. Again, I've included a link to this paper in the YouTube description. In this case, innovation in model architecture overcame a scaling bottleneck and shifted the scaling curve once again. Another aspect of these scaling laws is that they apply broadly across deep learning architectures and not just to large language models. So do researchers think the LLM scaling laws will continue to hold into the future? Well, with models, there continues to be a lot of focus on creating new model architectures, which could accelerate scaling. 
recently released DeepSeek R1 uses a mixture of experts or Mo model architecture. While the Mo architecture has been around for a while, and there's other Mo models out in the wild, DeepSeek's Mo models scale to 256 experts with eight active experts per token, a much larger number of experts compared to other Mo models. Here, innovations in the gating layer in the DeepSeq Mo model has enabled them to achieve this breakthrough. What about training data? Well, today's LLMs are being trained on all the data available, so it's possible that finding more training data might become a bottleneck in the future. Synthetic data is one example of potentially getting past this possible future bottleneck. I have a video on synthetic data where I go deeper into this specific topic. Feel free to check this out if you're interested, but for now, I'm gonna keep going. What about compute? Well, so far, the hyperscalers, along with AI startups, in early 2025, are continuing to invest heavily in more compute. Investors continue to support massive investment in data centers and new energy projects to help drive the next generation of frontier models. Okay, so now you should have a good high level understanding of the LLM skidding laws. You should understand that when training a large model from scratch, the LLM performance improves predictably with increases in model size measured in parameters, training data, and compute. Historically, there are times that predictable performance gains slow down when bottlenecks are encountered. These have been overcome by innovations in compute and model architectures. Okay, so let me know what you think about the LM scaling laws in the comments. Exciting stuff, right? Okay, thanks for watching. This video, along with all the other videos in this playlist, are listed in the YouTube description. I invite you to watch other videos on my channel. If you like the way I'm sharing this content, please consider subscribing. When you subscribe, this really helps my channel grow. One last thing, we all love technology, and we're all excited about all the innovation with the cloud, machine learning, AI. But don't forget to carve out some time to live in the real world. Get outside, go swimming, go hiking, go climbing, go surfing, but get out and move your body. And if you do, let me know in the comments. And with that, have a great day. Thanks.